Good morning. This lady had a big abscess apical to the upper right bicuspid teeth. You can see the swelling right here. We took a periapical radiograph. You can see the radiolucency right here. It's a large radiolucency. To be sure the, of the extent of the lesion, we also had a cone beam taken. And you can see this is quite a large lesion uh, at the apex of both the bicuspid teeth. And it was causing the patient quite a bit of pain from the pressure. So I'm using a Bard Parker. Actually, this is a 15 Bard Parker. You can use a 25, but this is a 15, a round tip. And I'm making an elliptical incision coronal to the lesion. So this part of the bone is not affected by the abscess. And make an incision large enough that you can reflect a large enough flap that you have access to the lesion. Now look at the purulent exudate pouring out of that lesion. Oh, can you imagine how good that feels to the patient to get rid of that? So this is not a complicated procedure if you know what you're doing. Just reflect enough tissue that you've got access and then you're going to clean all that infection and granulation tissue out of the site and then you're going to cut off the tips of the bicuspid teeth, apicoectomies, and retrofill them. See all the purulent exudate. So I'm rinsing, scrubbing, curetting, and you want to be sure that you can, that you cut the tips of the teeth off flush with the bone so you can get behind them, get palatal to them, and clean all of that out. And then I'm going to go in, once I've cleaned it all out with a curette and irrigated it, I'm going to go back in with a cotton ball, a large cotton ball held with cotton forceps with Perigard on it, and I'm going to just scrub it out and then irrigate it real well with Perigard, which is chlorhexidine. So you can see how large that lesion is. And now I'm flattening this out. Be sure you flatten out. You want to cut the tips of the teeth like this and be sure you can get behind them to clean all of that out. I'm removing a little bone, coronal, to the apex of the teeth and I'm removing the apex, apical part of both of the roots of these teeth. See, this is the root of the, I believe that's the first bicuspid. I'm taking that out. And then the, the apical part of the root of the second bicuspid. I'm removing that because that's the source of the infection. Now, of course, if these teeth had not had endodontics, you want to perform endodontics on the teeth. So I'm curetting all of that granulation tissue and infection out of the socket. It'll just peel right out. Then I've got good access behind the roots because I've flattened them out. Now I'm using a radius surge to touch some of the bleeding areas and just help stop the bleeding so I can retrofill the apical parts of the roots of the teeth. Probably the most difficult part of this procedure is stopping the bleeding. Then I'm cutting little uh, lugs in the apical part of those teeth where the gutta percha is to create a little hole into which to put the retrofill material. I'm just swabbing that out with chlorhexidine on a cotton ball. Just cleaning everything out. Then I'm filling the lesion with dry cotton balls to try to control the bleeding. This is very vascular. That's a difficult part, controlling the bleeding. You've got the bone is bleeding and the soft tissue is bleeding. Now this is endo sequence bone repair material. If you ever have a, it's the same material you use if you had a perforation in endo. Uh, 
you, you, this material is very effective for that. You can use IRM. I use that for many years. But you try to keep it dry. Place this, it sets very quickly. And smooth it out. The sealing of these, these the apical part of these canals is not perfect, it's just very good. See, so you can see how I've filled the apical part of the canals. Now I'm filling in the lesion with freeze-dried bone. You can use either Maxius freeze-dried bone or this happens to be Bioos. And it's a mix of mineralized, demineralized freeze-dried bone. It's very important you put a collagen membrane on top of this to give the bone a head start on the soft tissue. I really like Contour Adapt collagen resorbable membrane because it's very malleable. When you wet it, it adheres to whatever surface you place it on. So you soak this in sterile water, the membrane, and then place it over the bone graft material in the lesion. And what this does, it blocks the soft tissue. The soft tissue grows faster than bone. And so it blocks the soft tissue and gives bone an equal start on the soft tissue so the lesion fills up with bone and not soft tissue. Very important to place that resorbable collagen membrane. And this is such a large lesion, I decided to place two resorbable collagen membranes. Here's the second one. This is not a hard procedure. Just take your time and one of the big things to think about is reflect enough flap that you've got access and make a large enough hole that you've got access to the total lesion. Then I'm going to suture that with 4-0 gut suture. Now when you're suturing, it's important that you reflect this coronal tissue just a little bit so you can get your needle into the tissue. If, it's, if that tissue is adhered to the bone, you can't get the needle into the tissue. And you want to take a pretty big bite so it doesn't pull through the tissue. And I'm going to put four or five of these 4-0 gut sutures in that incision. And this is plenty good. You know, there are a couple of little holes here, but that won't matter because I'm reflecting her lip. When I'm not reflecting the lip, this will close together. And this is after a week's healing. It'll granulate in. So here's the final radiograph. You can see this is densely filled with the freeze-dried bone and these are the apical retrofills on the roots of those two bicuspid teeth. Needless to say, that patient was feeling a whole lot better. And that's the dental minute. These procedures work and they work every time.